We'll let the room build for a minute and we'll get it. Everybody, can I get a home in? Can I get a home in? What was that? <laughs> the reptilians. <laughs> the reptilians are here. Hey, what up, eh? What up? What's the deal? No, much good to have you on stage, bro. Right on, brother. I appreciate you having me. Hey, what's up, Fat? So, how you doing, family? What's up, big brother? How you doing? doing? What's up? Yes, sir. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. We're gonna get it popping in a minute, man. We're just trying to give a little bit more time for some more brothers and sisters to come on stage. Definitely want to hear from y'all, so. We'll get to y'all here in just a minute. Just bear with us. Like my brother Mount Zion trying to call Mount Judah coming up. We see. have just obtained Mount multiple Judah. leaked documents. Try to bring him up. I'm going to answer the call here in a minute. Hey, what's going on? What's going on, Dion? Hey, what's going on, bro? How you, doing? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Making my way in the captivity. I'm good, though. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, what's up, Nola? Nola Matt, what's happening? Hey, what's going on, Dion? Everything good, man. Everything good. All praises. All praises. Yeah, man. We got uh, we got a, we got Fatso on the on the on the uh, on the stage. We got Mount. We got Nola. We actually can get started here in about a minute. I get one more minute, and then we are gonna pop it off, man. Get this thing popping. I think A came on first, and then Fatso. So we are gonna start off with A. See what his perspective is on how to how did America get rich. We are gonna jump into that here in just a second. So give us one more minute, and we are gonna get it popping. Nola, I'm gonna pass it over to you. All right, Nola, I think we're ready to get it popping, fam. We start out with A. All right, all right. Yeah, all right. yeah. Um, of course. 
free slave labor. Okay, okay. Um, when we look at the free slave labor, what 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 else, what else can we say about that? What what slaves gave their labor for free? Was it everybody? Because I mean, uh, not too long ago, we heard somebody say that some white folks was slaves, and and, and they they work for free too. So did uh did they get their riches from from the backs of white people? No, I've heard people say they pick cotton too. White folks say they pick cotton too, but they probably got paid. I've never heard of free slave labor by white folks. It was just brothers and sisters. Right. It's just that the uh, them, them white folks that was picking cotton, that was called sharecropping. They was former slave owners that had to now pick I think you got cut off, Dean. Yeah, I don't know. It must have cut out on me, gentlemen. Yeah, what he was basically saying was um, those were sharecroppers. Those 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 white folks, they was uh, paid to do the things that they was doing. Meanwhile, our people, we, you know, like the scriptures say. Hey, matter of fact, did you know that uh, that, that was actually in the Bible? Brother A? must have a poor connection do you hear me yeah can you repeat yourself i think i had lost you i said did you know that what you said you know that that free slave labor did you know that that was in the bible uh no i haven't i've i've seen it you know more so but like the you know, the in a, on the Egyptian side, not necessarily in the Americas. You know, of course, Moses, you know, freed the slaves from bondage in Egypt type of thing. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, that did happen in Egypt, but, you know, that same slavery that, that, that happened over here as well. It was prophesied to happen, exactly. Um, go to Jeremiah 22 and 13, The book of Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 13. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness, and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages, and giveth him not for his work. So that that goes to show you that, you know, one of the things that we did was we worked for free. They didn't give us nothing for our work, you know. Um, but how else, how else, how else, uh, let me see, fat so how else did, uh, America get rich? A already, A already says slave labor. How else did America get rich? By experimenting on black folks and taking everything. Okay. What you mean by Damn. experimenting on black folk? Go ahead. Clear, clarify that. What would that Man, like, America is nothing but a big-ass project, man. An experiment for them crackers to, like, to experiment on us. Everything they do, everything, this shit already been written, bro. Like, I be listening to y'all, that shit is already written in the book. And these crackers is doing it to us and getting rich off of So what you're speaking of, like, stuff like um, the Tuskegee experiment, stuff like that? I think that all a lot falls into it. Okay, so we got uh, medical experiments, free slave labor. Uh, those are actually some, some good things to build on. Mount, you want to touch on any of that? Hey, don't forget about religion. Hey, that's one of the biggest ones. Hey, hey, Dion, what they, what they gross every year? With, with just the black church alone? I think $420 billion over the last 20 years. Damn. $420 billion divided by 20 years. You could do the math. These pastors is making 
hundreds of millions of dollars every single year combined. And we ain't we ain't got nothing to show for it in the black community. Nothing. That's why in a lot of these neighborhoods, man, uh you see these churches on every corner in our neighborhoods. And what you just just pay attention, what you see around the churches. You see nothing but destruction, man. So they just sucking up the money. So yeah, you gotta put religion in there. Yeah, every church around my hood, bro, y'all, it's always an empty lot next to that bitch. Every church. Hey, and then what the church do? You got to think about this. The church keep our people in a certain mindset. Come as you are. You can dress how you want to dress. Eat what you want to eat. So the pastor been telling our people, everything God made is good. You can eat whatever you want to eat. Then our grandmama's dying. Our grandfather's dying from high blood pressure and heart disease, all these different illnesses, and the pastor ain't got no solution. So he keeps the American system. Yeah, that's true, because, um, you know, one of the things that, that Christianity does as a whole is they continue to perpetuate the same thing that Willie Lynch did. You know, they put the woman in front and they put the man in the back. So that's why a lot of these churches are ran by women. So the come as you are doctrine, that that doesn't really do anything for a man. You know, that that more so affects women when they start talking about the uh, the Holy Spirit and the tithes and offerings. They don't re- a, a, a man, you know, men tend to think, oh, I got to pay my tithes in order for me to get a blessing. Sisters, they pay their tithes so they can get the world, everything. They want the husband, the car, the the house, the the, the provider, everything. And all they got to do is pay their little 10% in their uh, they Sunday best. And they just went to the club Saturday night and everything going to be all right. Hey, another way America get rich too, and uh, Fatso and A, I, I would like to hear y'all's opinion on this. America, America fabricates war. It fabricates war and it creates war amongst other nations. Oh, yeah. They're the they biggest thieves. They're thieves. And that was another thing I did when it, that war. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess when we got colonized from, what was it, Europe or England, whoever colonized us, and then we went to civil war and became a country of ourselves. And then the Indian Wars taking the land. So, of course, they took all the land from the Indians and started finding gold and oil and stuff like that, too. Besides cotton, it was other things like gold and oil. They got rich by, too. Yep. Tobacco, rubber, uh, in, in the Congo, all these various different places. They trade with these other nations. Um, I think they just built a huge gas pipe. That's what they've been doing in Afghanistan and Turkestan and Pakistan over the last 20 years, we've been thinking they've been over there to, you know, uh, to, to, to war for us, to protect us here in America. Meanwhile, they're building gas pipelines in these people's country and, and killing the natives of the land and changing uh, their culture. I mean, if you lived in Afghanistan, you'd be angry too. Yeah, you they're, know? they're doing it right here. I think it was like in Dakota, maybe somewhere in North Dakota where they moved the Indians, the Native American Indians off their land and were building something through there right here. The Keystone right here Pipeline. It's called the Keystone Pipeline. Yeah. That's when yep. yeah. Donald Trump first Think came in into Dakota, power. right? In Dakota? Yep. Or? yep, that's it. That's it. Also, uh, not, when you mentioned Afghanistan, Dion, uh, a lot of people don't know, but prior to 2001, Afghanistan was responsible for less than 10% of the world's heroin. Now, today, Afghanistan is responsible for more than 90% of the world's heroin. Hey, you, hey, you hit that shit on the head. Yeah, man. So it's, it's corruption, it's, it's, it's war, it's, it's evil, it's all these things uh, rolled up into one. And, and this place is, 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 is flourishing off of it. These, these tax dollars that, they, that we paying. And all this money is, is going into uh, keeping this system afloat and the destruction of people. If I could, give me Michael 2. Michael 2, verse 1, real quick. I'm going to show you that the Bible talk about that too, brothers. Uh, brother A, Brother Faso. The Bible talk about these same things as it pertains to this place. 
You just got to know where to go and have it taught to you the correct way. Watch this. Micah 2. Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. So what the leaders of this place do, they go off into these various different think tanks and they come together at these seminars and these tumults and they sit around and they want and they, they ponder on how to oppress nations, right? How to take take from these various different nations, you know, and, they, and even oppress their own inhabitants, uh, which would be, of, of course, us. And like you said earlier, eh, uh, about the Keystone Pipeline that they uh, created um, in North Dakota, moved, moved our brothers, Native American Indians. The Gadites scored to the Bible off of their land and uh, and basically created that pipeline. Same thing they're doing in Afghanistan today. So this is what they do. They think about these things, these sins. And then in the morning, when they wake up the next morning, they put it into play. They, they make moves behind closed doors to make these things happen. Watch this. Can you read? And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house. Even a man and his heritage. So, hey, they go what you were saying about how they was moving the Native Americans off of their land so they can create headway for that Keystone Pipeline. The same exact thing, right? Same thing they're doing over in, in Afghanistan. The same thing they did to uh, so-called Hispanics. Same thing they did to the Native Indians here. Uh, same thing they do in Africa. It's, it's all over the world. And, and all this comes back to one thing, power and money. All of it. Hey, all praises. Yep, you are, you are definitely right. We got Andre on stage. Andre, uh, the question of the room, how did America get rich? We already had Brother A say free slave labor. Uh, Fatso said, you know, medical uh, apartheid, basically. What, what do you say? Yeah, I'm going to go along with, uh, you know, Fatso with these, with these doctors and things like that. You know, we know about uh, Tuskegee, you know, the experiment with the men, but with the women, how they was, you know, taking our women and operating on them and wasn't even using no no anesthesia. They say the black woman didn't need none, you know, and then just ripping her apart, just, you know, testing everything on the inside of her to find out what's going on, you know. But let me say this before I, I finish, though. Uh, Kat, I mean, Brother Dion, I want to thank you, brother, because... I came in this thing with you, man, years ago. And I think you did, uh, you and your brothers did, uh, went to the, the 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 church seminar and was talking to them people. And I think you did a little bit on this, man, about how Mississippi became like the, the number one state that made America like the fourth largest economy in the world. Bro, let me say this, man. Whenever you come out with some facts, because I've been following you for years, I go back and I, I check it. Bro, you've never been wrong. You know what you're talking about, and I appreciate that because I've been in some some places, man, where these dudes like freshly shaven, trying to preach the word of God. I'm like, come on, man. This this, this you you guys, I love y'all. I'm on here every night. I just wanted to come in and say that, man. But like Faso said with the medical, how they was treating our women, you know, no anesthesia and just cutting them open, talking about the black women don't need that. Hey Andre, you on point about the uh, about that? That's uh, James Marion Sims. That was his name. Um, I, I forgot the young woman that he experimented on. I read it one time. Uh, he basically did sixteen different surgeries on that young black girl. I think she was um, I think she was seventeen years old from the time she was seventeen to the time she was eighteen. He did sixteen different surgeries on her, um, and and they call him the father of gynecology. So when the black woman goes to the gynecology. You kill sure. mad babies also. A lot of black children also. He nailed things in the back of their skulls, and he killed them as well. Don't leave that out either. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. I, white bastard. I'll just tell you straight to your face. He's a, he, those of you who are here with coons and niggas, I'll just tell you straight. Marion Sims is an evil white bastard, and he killed a lot of, he killed hundreds upon hundreds of babies. I mean, he would nail things in the back of their skull because he believed as is believed today that black people are very, very um less um what's the word um susceptible to pain. And he killed a right. lot of black babies, right. black women. He taught them apart. They they were not they were they were experimented on without without um um without uh anesthesia. 
because we were, we were, we were deemed as animals. So, um, F word him, uh, and all praise to the Lord that he's dead. I hope he died a violent death as well. That would have, as I said, man. Bring it up. Well, that's all I had, brothers. I'm going to mute my bike. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Hey, appreciate you, Andre. Yeah. Great comp- contribution, man. Who we got next? Uh, I think Terry was next. Uh, uh, Yes, sir. Terry, Terry. So the question of the room is, how did America get rich? All right, we had uh, Brother A. He gave us his perspective. You know, Andre agreed with uh, Fatso about the uh, medical experimentation. Um, we just heard a little bit about that. Um, so what do you think? How did America... It, it, was, it was definitely slave labor. Uh, slave labor combined with uh, free labor up north that competed with slave labor. Uh, which was honestly just as racist as the the slave labor uh, institution. So I would definitely say slave labor. I do have a, a quick question on the slave labor. It's a known fact that Native Americans were involved in the slave labor, or in in the slave trade. They owned slave. They slated trade uh, slaves, Indian and African. How do you reconcile that fact with them being brothers of of your of, of your movement? Okay, so why were and it wasn't all Native Americans? Why were some Native Americans put in a position to uh, be over black people as slaves? And were they worked just as hard as white people work slaves? Well. I'm going to say, oh, yeah, because they tried to assimilate in the white, the Cherokee, honestly, all the five nations, but the Cherokee uh, was one of them tried to assimilate into white society. And so they emulated the slave culture. So they drew cotton. They worked black slaves just as hard as, you know, the white people did. There was no difference. And they already had slavery established before white people came here. So the original slaves really were Native Americans that other Native Americans sold to the white men. All right. I got to correct you on a couple of things. Um, they did not uh, voluntarily assimilate um, that. The, the What happened to the Native Americans was the first school to prison pipeline. The white folks actually had a saying in those reform schools that they sent them to. Um, it was called kill the Indian, save the man. And over a course of time, they tried to make those same Native Americans who they uh, forced to have white names and forced to dress white and forget their history. They tried to force them to have slaves um, to the point of death. So it was either, hey, have be over these slaves or I'm going to kill you. So a lot of times they didn't have a choice in the matter. And when they did have those slaves that were on the uh, plantations, they were not worked how white people worked them. In fact, some of them even integrated into their families. And a lot of those Native American so-called slave owners were put to death because of that. Yeah, they married, they married, they married their daughters um, to many of the tribe of Judah. Um, you had the Reuben, the Reubenites, uh, which are the Seminole Indians. You had um, the tribe of Gad, like you, like you mentioned, the Five Nations, Cherokee, Chickasaw. Uh, Choctaw and so on and so forth, um, Creek, and uh, they actually married um, many of the quote unquote so called African slaves, which was from the tribe of Judah. They married them into their tribe. So, like, he, like, like, um, like he was just saying, they were forced. Go ahead, eat. I think. Eat. Yeah, not to mention um, a lot of Native Americans who passed for Negroes, being that they were actually Negroes themselves were removed from their land. The ones who passed as Negroes were reclassified as Negroes. So a lot of Negroes that you think is, that you think in the hood and streets are here in the hood, whether it be DC, Cali, uh New York, whatever we do to think are Negroes are Native Americans as well. Um the ones who passed as contrary to Negro who had more different features um, they were put in reservations. The ones who passed more or had ne- more Negro-like features were uh, were um, reclassified as Negroes. So, when it comes to Native Americans being slave owners, the ones who are made as slave owners, um, the full bloods hated them. A lot of the slave owners of Native Americans were, in fact, children of um, white folks. A lot of, of the 
Native Americans had um, the ones who had white fathers, which were the minority. The uh, I call them um, um, Spaniard natives. The Spaniard natives they owned slaves, and they were the ones who were involved in the enslavement. Um, not to mention the Native Americans that are the first ones to be enslaved and institutionalized in areas and from um, schools such as the Carlisle Institute as well as um, Hampton University. These were Native American slash Negro schools in which Blacks and Native Americans were being educated to be um, whitenized or Europeanized in their education, to hate and to uphold white supremacy and to be ag agriculturalists, agricultural laborers. So a lot of Native Americans of five civilized nations you're referring to, Terry, were slave-minded or were enslaved mentally first and were um, introduced to Negroes to be enslaved. The reason why Native Americans had slaves is because of the fact that um, they were told one thing, either you were to have slaves on your land to work it or you were to lose your land entirely if you were to contest it. So that's the reason why Native Americans had slaves in their land or were forced to be slave or were to pose or to play the slave master role. Um, and one, the ones who played the slave master role sincerely were in actuality white folks themselves because white folks who had Native American women, they put their children or their white bastardized Native American children up as slave masters to pose as slave masters to rule over the slaves and Native Americans who were pure-blooded in the lands. So Native Americans were not, in fact, uh, involved in the slave trade. The ones who were slave-minded or were coonized, as Negroes are today, they're the ones, in fact, who were enforced to uh, enact these rules and regulations as Negroes to be on their, in their land as slaves. Uh, that answers questions. Hi, uh, this is Robert. Thanks, Dion, for letting me talk. I, I think slavery has been around like since before biblical times. Unfortunately, though, in America, you know, because many African-Americans were brought over, I mean, slavery was in Africa even before it came to America. But the, the difference, I think, in America, though, is that if you're African-American, just by the sheer part of your, your skin color, you're always identified as a somewhat of a slave even if you're a freed black man from north america you're always not equal to the white man and part of that is you know that's what kept the society down i mean i was shocked even today in where i live in austin the disparity between the black population color population white population that the highway distinguishes the population and the way America got rich or where Amer African Americans did not get rich is they didn't give the, the African American areas services, good schools, wow. Wow. clean water, you wow. know, wow. And, and the thing, wow. sorry, wow. go on. Uh -huh. I'm sorry to cut you off. Where you, um, what are you, in terms of ethnicity, where, where are you from? Where, where are you from? You said Austin. You're from Austin, Texas. Where, where do you say, what's your ethnicity? Where I'm I'm um, Vietnamese Chinese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of of, of um, what you just said earlier, I'll cut you off. I'll cut you off. No, I'm sorry. Um, no disrespect. In terms of Negroes and Native Americans, Negroes and Native Americans, um, together were enslaved and were reclassified um ethnically in terms of uh, eth ethnicity wise in terms of um, and they were both enslaved. Negroes and Native Americans were heavily heavily indoctrinated. And we're divided. Um, Negro, if you watch a movie called 12 Years a Slave, by, which, is a, which is a movie um, based upon the, the, um, the slave narrative by Simon Northup, there's a scene. It's very, very short, but it's very, very, um, very, very um, important. Um, uh, the Native Americans and Negroes, they were, in fact, enslaved. Uh, as also, as well, since you're Vietnamese and Chinese, a lot of Negroes, especially referred to as Kunlans, they were placed, they were shipped over to China, as well as Philippines, um, the, and, um, the place called Mogadishu, not Mogadishu, I mean, um, 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 Guangzhou. A lot of Negroes who were referred to as Kunlans were placed as slaves under the Chinese, under the Ming, Song, and Tang dynasty. Um, 
uh, and the, the black samurai Yosuke, the first black samurai in Japan, he came from Mogadishu. He was shipped over there. A lot of Negroes um, were brought right. to China, and a lot of uh, Nigerians and people of Africa were placed in areas where Bruce Lee was born, Guangzhou province. They were placed there. Negroes were also recently being beaten and evicted from their homes in the, in the province of Guangzhou, a port city. Um, about people who who are allowed to stay in a certain province, coincidentally, in Guangzhou, the same place where Negroes are shipped over and brought over as slaves sure. in the Guangzhou province, from which you, you descend from, the land from which you descend from, um, Negroes were persecuted as there, um, not only in the past but also in the present. Um, our people who our people um, who resided in that province were enslaved and mistreated today as they were. Hundreds of years ago, so I um, mean, you're definitely speaking some truth. Well, um, being reason being, I wanted to interrupt you. Sorry, don't give a bit of your thought. Yeah, um, I wanted I wanted to touch on what what Rob was just saying about the yeah, yeah. They had like that redlining, what they were doing. If someone could speak about that redlining, how they, because that's what Rob was trying to say about how they were putting us in different sections where they were redlining us and keeping us from good schools and having the best properties and stuff. Rob, yeah. Gann, I'm sorry, I didn't cut you off. Have, um, hey, thank you. Rob, go ahead continue. I, 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 um, when I have the time, I'll interject that. Uh, go ahead, finish your point, Rob. Yep, go ahead. Um, uh, let me see if I remember. I'm oh, I, was, I, I think <laughs> that when you're talking I think when you're talking about American Indians, yes, American Indians are definitely treated wrong. I mean, they were fed cocaine to dig in the mines to dig gold, you know, just to keep them going. And, you know, they're malnourished. But I think the difference, though, is that back to pigmentation, American Indians can can marry, you know, half half Indian, half Caucasian. They look more Caucasian. And but the thing is, African-American genes are just very strong, you know. And even, you know, even when you're down to a quarter, they still identify you as African American, just like Barack Obama said. You know, even though he's half, when he goes to try to get a taxi, they're they're not going to pick him up because they think he's African American. You know that 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 person. You know, so that's why, you know, just African Americans just had a, you know, raw deal for the longest time, and they haven't shared in the benefits of the American society for the longest time you know so that's that's but well, hey. why, 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 why do you why do you think that is why, why do you think that um black americans or blacks are people well though i mean i'm looking at your picture now i'm seeing yourself i mean you, um what's your nationality again you're vietnamese and what again vietnamese and chinese but i mean i i you know i i grew up in a lot of different countries because my dad is um works in oil, but my stepdad's white. I mean, I, I, I see, you know, I see different perspectives, but I can never, of course, be identified with issues that involve African Americans, but I just, my experience around it and everything, I mean, I can see that, you know, it's, it's like stark as day. I mean, you would think that racism is not as a big an issue, but it's right there in the latest census, right in front of your eyes, how many, where all the, African Americans are, and where white people are, and then the, this gentrifying issue in Austin, at least many African Americans have, you know, used to be like the projects there and housing and things like that, but now that area has become gentrified, and I think a lot of African Americans have lost some of the boom, well, you know, of the property uh, prices. Well, Sorry, Rob, I'll, I'll tell you, um, um, being that. I'm not sure if you're, how old you are, but I know there was a video I saw of um Malcolm, of um, not Malcolm X, um Cassius Clay, who um became Malcolm Muhammad Ali. He spoke about the uh, how the white folks were trying to enforce him to uh, encourage the draft of Black Americans being forced to fight the Vietnamese War in Vietnam. My uncle, he was involved in that. He was a medic in that involved in that war. Um, and Muhammad Ali was heavily opposed to that battle. And he said, why should I fight against the blacks that live in Vietnam when the blacks here in America are being oppressed even more severe? Sorry, sir. Um, 
he, I think he, he was saying, why am I fighting against these Vietnamese? They didn't do anything to me, you know? Right. Well, no, 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 no. Right. I'm saying he, he was saying the Vietnamese, so I'm looking at your picture now, you almost, damn it, you're, 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 you're about two shades lighter than myself. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that um, I'm already understood that, that, that at the end of the day, um, the children of Israel, um, uh, a lot of our black, a lot of black folks who were involved in the Vietnamese War, my uncle included, a lot of we, we made a lot of we made a lot of children in that land. Israel, I mean, this is, the, the whole topic is how did America get rich? And when you examine America's America's wealth, America's wealth um, came from the slave labor of indigenous as well as imported slaves who were brought to this side of the world. The Native Americans who were imported to the side of the world. As well as the, as well as the ne- Negroes who were brought over here by force, were in fact the same people, despite their physiological differences or features or um, cultures. They were the same exact people um, historically, and the Europeans knew this. And what I'm, what I'm trying to convey is that any race of people who are contrary to European or Eurocentric features are an enemy to that people. And they've enslaved and, and conquered and indoctrinated that race. So this this pretty much this room is pretty much an emphasis upon the powers that be and how they gain their wealth and riches um enslaving those people. If I, if I may give me um Micah two and one. Did I put that before? Micah two and one. Biblically speaking, are you, t- are you talking to me? No, no, no. I'm the reader. The reader, Buka. Yes, sir. The book of Micah, chapter two, verse one. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Now, hold on, hold on. The... now, iniquity means sin. The word sin means transgression of God's laws. Go ahead. You know. When the morning is light, they practice it, because it is in the power of their hand. So and they covet. So this nation has power in their hand to enact these um things that we read about. We don't. And they covet fields and take them by violence. They covet fields or lands and take them by violence and take them by violence. Go ahead. And houses and take them away. Uh, we all, so they we all we all know full well America was not taken by peace. America was taken by violence. Violence they they, they put smallpox blankets on the Native Americans if they didn't if they didn't in, in, if they didn't uh um put viruses upon the people, they came here and, and attacked them, uh murdered them by the sword, not by the sword, by what by, by the disease. Go ahead. So they oppress a man and his house. They are even a man. They oppress a man, being a, a man, nationality, and his home, his people, and his house. Go ahead. Even a man and his heritage. A man and his heritage means a nation and his land and the things that are associated with his heritage, meaning his culture, his nationality, his land, all the above. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Is it? Yes, sir. So, so, so now you may ask yourself: um, when you examine, when you examine America, America was a land that was stolen. Okay, it was stolen. It was robbed um, and taken. It wasn't just. It wasn't negotiated. It wasn't a vote. It was robbed and stolen. So, the Native Americans, believe it or not, um, I myself, brothers who I'm associated with. We have had conversations with Native American chiefs, and we we visited um, powwows. A lot of Native Americans, oftentimes yearly, they have, annually they have powwows, and we said, "Hey, listen, we're gonna have a conversation with you Native Americans." The guy told the guy said to us, hey, "What's the point? What's the purpose of you coming here? Go to the ghettos and slums, and you'll find Native Americans living amongst y'all. A lot of these Negroes who think that they're Negro, the Native American." Okay, so and a lot of the so-called Native Americans who passed for Negro were reclassified as Negroes and were lost rights to their land. Okay, so 
Um, how did America get rich? It got rich by stealing and and, and coveting a land that did not pertain to them. Go ahead, um, Dion. Uh, um, no luck. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're still on reservations to this day. Yep, they still are. Can I? Yes, they are. Have you? Have it, has, has anybody ever been on a reservation or seen what it's like to yes. be on a reservation? Yes, sir. Can you can you describe what it is? Ran down, ran down shab houses, like old Western country in 2021. I've been to the Torres Martinez Reservation in Coachella in California, where I'm from in Southern California, and they're just ousted. It's worse than being black to be a Native American down there. It's they have a harder time than being a brother being there. in it's just terrible. They're all alcoholics. It's, sure. it's against the law to let them drink almost. They're on a cycle of dependence. Yeah, that's what they're, yeah they're, I, they're alcoholics and meth heads. They're um they're suicidal. Um, the rates of of suicide and drug addiction in the reservations is very very high. And matter of fact, those of y'all in the room, the, um the highest police brutality is Native American first and Negro second. That's a very that's a highly classified and um, unknown fact that Native Americans are in fact more susceptible to police brutality than Negroes. Ne Native Americans are number one, Negroes are number two, and Hispanics are number three in terms of police brutality. And the reason why that is because Native Americans and Negroes are in fact the very same people. When, I, when, we, when my organization attended the Black Lives Matter, Black, 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 that's bullshit, excuse my language, when the um the 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 um million man march that was about three years ago, they had um Native Americans, Negroes, Native Americans that that were Hispanics that that attended that meeting that uh, meeting, the Native Americans who were there, they even themselves said at their own mouth that the main culprits, but not culprits, but the main victims behind this brutality is Native Americans number one. Blacks number two, and, they have, and the Hispanics number three. We're the same, all the same people. But he, uh, you know, so I just something to point out. Can I can I bring up something? I want to get back on the topic of how did America get rich? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, let me, look, from what I've read, so America really got rich after World War II because it was only industrialized nation that was still intact because Europe destroyed it, you know, was fighting against each other, and Asia was pretty much beat up when the Chinese and Japanese fought against each other. So we had all these factories, and everybody still wanted manufactured goods. So we had a lead start on them from the 50s and 60s. That's supposedly the greatest generation. My question and my thought, actually, is why did African Americans not benefit like the rest of the nation? You know, why did why did we become the number one nation, the the dollar being the dominant currency in the world. Because before that, Britain was the number one nation. And then, then we did after World War II. But African Americans never benefited from that. Well, the reason, you know? well, the, the, the reason is, is because the reason they, they say that is, you, I'm pretty sure you've um, heard of a term called manifest destiny, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Manifest Destiny was their ammunition as to why they treated up like this, why they said uh, what they said about black people. And that that imagery has never changed. So the reason why black people have never benefited is simply because we were never meant to benefit mm -hmm. off of mm -hmm. this place. We were, we were meant to come over here as slaves. And that's what we remained as. But we were never meant to benefit, which is why um, right now uh, the so-called Jewish people, they get uh, reparations. Um, a lot of different countries that, you know, were wronged in the past, they got reparations. Black people don't get reparations for anything that they've done. And matter of fact, the Afghans that are coming over here, each family is getting two thousand two hundred and seventy something dollars from the government when black people can't even get good housing something that can cost a whole lot less but 
other people from outside of this country can come here and just do whatever they want. And that's actually written in the scriptures. Give me Deuteronomy 28. I, I, I hear you on that. Um, I think that, yeah. Uh, one, sec- did- one second, Rob. One second, Rob. We're going to read a scripture to actually back this up because this is uh, biblical smoke. So we're going to actually read a scripture to back up what I just said. Uh, verse. I believe it's uh, either 29 or 30. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. So it said we're going to grope, meaning we're trying to find our way. Black people have been trying to find their way for centuries, especially in this land. Now, America was absolutely rich way before World War II. Um, they funded a lot of the world's economy through the slave trade since the 1600s. Um, when you look at, um, places like the United Fruit Company, when you look at, um, when, when white people first came over here, the, the ability to catch so many fish was mind blowing to them that they were shipping fish from America back to Europe by the boatloads. So they were making money hand over fist, meanwhile, killing the inhabitants of the land over here. So they were absolutely rich beyond any other nation, especially for them being such a young country. But when you look at it, black people were never meant to prosper here. This is our punishment in all actuality. We we were put over here as a punishment. And that's why the scripture says we're we're not going to prosper and we're only going to be oppressed and spoiled evermore. The reason why we're not going to prosper, the reason why we're not uh, going to do those things is because over the course of these few hundred years that we've been here, we've lost touch with our own history. That's why we go after every other God except our own. We go after every other piece of history except our own. We go after every religion except our own. And now we have no idea who we are or what we're supposed to do. So until we actually start to acknowledge that fact, um, that's when God will actually start to take care of us because he's not going to come back and uh, offer salvation to women who dress uh, very prostitutish and twerk on social media 24 seven. They twerk on ambulances. They twerk inside of restaurants and dining establishments uh, brothers are, are, are dealing drugs left and right. Um, the, the good men that are actually holding jobs and taking care of their business, they're put on the back burner in the media. And the, the, the image of black people, men and women, is so decrepit in this country that we can't prosper because who wants to give those types of people a chance? Who wants to give those types of people an opportunity? That's why we have to, as a people, change ourselves. It's not going to happen. No, nobody. This country, especially, is not going to let it happen. Yeah, it goes back to fatherless sons. True, but who made the fatherless sons? Where did that start from? The, the the white folks started that stuff with the with social with with welfare and mm-hmm. keeping the fathers out of the house. It, exactly. And they and, and guess what? They still become rich off of that because the black man still has to work. He's not in the house. So black man is still paying taxes. He's still working. He's still paying into the system who in return is paying money out subsidized for housing and food for black women that don't have men. Can I can I sorry? But still, but still hey, I you know, and I don't mean to contradict nothing no one says. I'm I'm very far from intelligent, biblically speaking, but man's supposed to know right from wrong to raise his kids and not. Can't nobody tell you not to raise your children. You know, that's... You know, hold on, Rob. Hold on, Rob. Hold on. You, you are absolutely right, A. But when you have situations in this country where the woman has been given all of the power... All she has to do is tell police, hey, he threatened me or I feel threatened by his presence. 
There's countless videos on social media right now where black men are trying to see their children and the mothers of these children who have sole custody are mistreating these men and using their children as weapons. So, of course, 70 to matter of fact, 80 to 85 percent of black men take care of their children, whether in the house or out the house. So it's not the idea that black men don't take care of their children. It's the, the fundamental idea that marriage is not honored in our community, which therefore pits black women against black men. And that has been since the dawn of slavery. When you read the Willie Lynch letter, they took the strongest, biggest slave, beat him to half to death. And then once he actually survived that, what could the woman say? Oh, my God, this big, strong black man that I looked up to my entire life, he just got damn near beat to death and he couldn't do nothing to save himself. So how is he going to save me? Which is in turn makes the women raise their young daughters to be strong and independent and raise their young men to be weak and docile and say, hey, whatever they say, just do what they say. Just follow what they say. Don't put up no fight. Don't offer no fuss. Keep your head down. Just do your work. That's been a cycle that's been perpetuated. You got to think about it, just going back to the topic, how they got rich. You know, that whole cycle of um, making marriage is not honorable, pushing that through the media. Um, now you got our brothers and sisters in the court system, um, paying each party, paying lawyers um, anywhere from thirty-five to six thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? To for custody rights for men just to have visitation um, of the child. You know what I'm saying? All these things were uh, perpetrated on us. You know what I'm saying? Through slavery. Um, and this is why, you know, when you read the scriptures, it tells you that these people have a perpetual hatred towards us, you know, that won't stop. So when Rob, when you made the statement earlier, you know, how come um, black folks are not benefiting, you know, off of this American dream? You got to understand, uh, like it was stated, we weren't a part of this. You know, in the Constitution, we still three fifths of a man. You understand? So this, this right here. Us in America, this is not our land. This is not our rest. We were brought here so we can understand that, guess what? We, we must come back to who we are, to our identity, in order to start prospering. You know what I'm saying? And it's not, that prosperity is not coming in America. I guarantee you that. All of you guys have a lot of truth. Uh, I respect that. Um, I want to kind of talk about what you all just said. Uh, you know, when you see movies like 12 Years a Slave, you, you got to I think you got to picture yourself back in those times. You got to remember there was a white landowner and he would go in these shacks that African-American slaves would live. And they would, you know, they supposedly have these husband wife relationship, but they're not really because they're property. The men, the, the owner, the white man will go in there and have sexually assault the woman. And, or emasculate the, the husband and destroy the family or sell the family like cattle. So how could you expect generations of social destruction like that, that people of that, that, um, you know, African-Americans could come out of that with a social uh, system that was a good family structure. Actually, when, the African Americans that came from Africa actually had very strong family values, but it was over generations of slavery that it got messed up, and we're suffering it today, as you all have talked about. Yeah, hey. you are, you're absolutely right. Um, I want to get to Jaron. Uh, matter of fact, Jaron, uh, the topic of the room is how did America get rich? Uh, we've had several points brought out. Uh, one was free slave labor, and another one was the medical apartheid. Uh, another one was uh, warmongering. You know, they, they go into other countries and steal their wealth. What, what do you say, Jared? Um, I want to say right now what I'm noticing is like, you know, the pharmaceutical companies, you know, selling all their their drugs and like presenting it as like the best health med me methods. But, you know, overall, just profiting off of, you know, the money and uh, what they're getting from it. Uh, I can't remember the exact statistics, but I forget. one drug was just, um, they're making, there was at least a, a billion uh, prescriptions for um, 
I can't remember the exact drug, but one of the, you know, one of those little drugs. Fentanyl. What was that? Fentanyl. Yeah, I believe that was it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. They, and those, hey, those one more drugs time, what was like, the name of it? Fentanyl with an F. Fentanyl. Oh, yeah. Fentanyl, fentanyl, yeah. Synthetic. Fentanyl. Yeah. Synthetic heroin. Yeah. So, yeah, they're presenting these, you know, these drugs as a, that we need them to be healthy, but, you know, they're actually like, bad for our health and overall it's just like a cycle of them profiting you know from that um those drugs hey you're absolutely right that's why um it's called the food and drug administration the food is defiled and makes you need the drugs and the drugs make you go back to uh whatever lifestyle you were living which was bad eating which makes you eat more food which makes you go get more drugs that's why Black people have a history of high blood pressure, heart disease, and all of these things. Why? Because we have what's called soul food. And white people sell us that soul food, and they sold us that imagery of soul food because, you know, we got the scraps of what was left in slavery, and we just kept that tradition going all the way up until now. And that's why we're overweight. That's why we have gout and high blood pressure. We have uh, poor health. We have poor circulation. Um, uh, our, our teeth are not right. Our eyesight fades very quickly. We, we just were health wise, we're messed up. But go to Deuteronomy 28 and 61 to actually show Jaron that what you said is actually biblical as well. Yo, that's not specific to black people, no, that's to America as a people, like, like overweight. Black people, poor, black people are the number habits. one. Black people are number one in heart disease. Black people are number one in obesity. Black people are number one in high blood pressure. Number one in diabetes. You black can look the stats up if you want, but black nah, people, black people, people, black people are predisposed to it. But, uh, but not, Nola, specific, not specific to black people. Though. Well, Nola, uh, oh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I like how. I like how the argument is introduced where it makes it universal. Like, um, not only are black folks affected by it, but um, other nations as well. And I'm inclined to agree. Uh, I didn't see who was speaking, but I'm inclined to agree with that. Um, but Nola, go ahead, because once you introduce that argument, I'll, I'll, I'll come behind you. Go ahead. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So the sicknesses, and we realize that, yeah, other people do get sick, but not at the rate that black people do. And to, to say that we are the greatest people, we shouldn't even be getting sick like that. We should be the most healthy people. We should be the model citizens of what it's like to eat right and take care of your body. But instead, we are the model citizens of eating defiled crabs and, and catfish. We eat pork by the boatload. Uh, we, we, we overindulge in sweets, candy. We, uh, we, everybody wants to be uh, uh, the, the, the biggest, buffest, fattest person that they can be. And yet, a lot of our women, they get old by themselves. Why? Because the men die off. And most of them die of heart disease. Go ahead. Stress. Hey, yeah. stress. You, stress is a big killer too, man. Y'all don't leave out stress. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. But if I may, um, since we're, since we're going to, uh, I know our people tend to have the propensity to include other nations. You know, um, not, not, not to fault them, but you know, based upon Christianity, and indoctrination and democracy and politics, our people have gained the propensity to try to include other nations in the uh, detriment of black folks. Our people, in fact, are in fact targeted in terms of medical um, apartheid, um, in terms of eradication of a race. Our people are the main target. Um, dark nations, period, are the target of eradication, but blacks, um, so-called Hispanics who think they not, not, not niggas, they don't, they as well. We are in fact the prime tar primary um, target of eradication, mentally, physically, medically, 
spiritually, in every in every way, in every spectrum, we are the main target. But since that's being in, introduced in the conversation, <laughs> give me Revelation six verse eight, please. This history coincides with the history of the European race. If anyone has a contrary or counter argument to contest this, I would gladly love to hear your counter argument regarding this. Revelation, last book of, last book of the Bible, six, chapter 6, verse 8. Revelation 6, verse 8, please. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. Stop, 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 stop. Now, we, we were talking about how the um, Negroes and Native Americans were involved in the how America got rich. Now, we both know, all of us who are educated in the history know that America gained its wealth through stealing this land from the American or the Aboriginal indigenous people of this land, right? So Native Americans were in fact involved in this doctrination or enslavement. In verse 8 again, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse. Now, the Native Americans referred to the so-called white man who took this land from them as the pale face. They called them pale face because the Bible calls the white man or the European people, his man and his woman, the red or pale-faced nation. These horses that are written in Revelation on reference to the European people. So read verse, verse 8 again. Eat a bite. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. And I look. See, you know Revelation is the last book of the Bible in reference to the most powerful people or race of people that are upon the face of the earth. There's no race of people that no one in this room can compare that has the same power or capacity of power to the European nations on the earth today that is in decline or decadence today. It again. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. So the his pale horse is the European racist people or history documented prophetically by the prophet John. A black man, a prophet, who was a disciple of a black man who was lynched or hung on a cross, okay, known as the black messiah, Jesus the Christ, and his right-hand man, or right-hand men, Peter, James, and John, the Revelator. We proceed again. One more time. Go ahead. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death. So this pale horn, this pale horse, is the history or track record of a race of people. Okay? And this horse carried upon him a rider. And this rider, on this, on this horse, this pale horse, his rider was death. Why should we not continue? And hell followed him. Hell means perdition. Or corruption, meaning confusion. For example, same-sex marriage, um, marital division, gender division, um, confusion, political division, religious confusion, um, genetic confusion. It's all hell. Continue. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. The fourth part of the earth is America. America is referred to as, the earth is, is, is divided into four continents, okay? You have Africa, Asia, America, and another part. This is all referred to as Noah's sons. Noah's sons were Shem, Ham, Japheth, Europe, the Far East, um, Africa and the, and the, and the, and the, um, the West, America. Go ahead. To kill with sword. To kill with the sword of the conquistadors, the British troops, America. Go ahead. And with hunger. And with death 
and with the beast of the earth. Now, some of y'all who are, who are unfamiliar with the Bible, this is the beast of the earth that goes into the dogs, the rats, the animals that were used to 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 uh, as weapons to kill the Native Americans on this land, and not only that, but to bring it up to modern speed. Modern times, you have what is called zoology. You have um, the COVID vaccine, the COVID virus was created by fetal animal, fetal matter, as well as human fetal tissue combined to further um, infect the mass population of all the races, but the primary target of those races regarding the COVID vaccine, especially in the Americas. There's an article, look it up, that says, um, those you pay attention to the news, they want to be affected by the COVID, va- the COVID va- um, virus was Caucasians and Asians became a Native American, Hispanic, and Negro problem. They use fetal animal and fetal human tissue combined and HIV to increase the um, the potency of the vaccine of the not the state vaccine of the virus to infect and to attack Negroes. I give you an example. Um, Haiti, the president of Haiti was recently assassinated because he rejected among many other African leaders of Africa in 2020, prior to the year being killed for refusing the vaccination of this man-made, militarized, militarized weapon of, genes- of, 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 of um, vaccine, of virus, um, I was targeting dark races of people, primarily our people, blacks. Okay. Um, well, my people, black, my are they, my, are my they, own. For depopulation huh? or what reason? Huh? For depopulation or, you know, just trying to kill us off? Or all, all, all the above. Because blacks are told you don't know full well that the nation hey, I think, I think this is irresponsible rhetoric, especially like speaking that you, like all the shit that you were saying earlier about like people being predisposed to or like lead and. and Weight and all these other shit. Oh God! No, no. I mean, you don't listen. I'm not. I'm just asking. Like, like you don't think this is dangerous rhetoric? If these people, uh, like, uh, like health is already compromised. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, black people are affected disproportionately. Um, you said dangerous rhetoric. Dangerous to who? To black people. Like you, you how's essentially how's the dangerous rhetoric? Be, because if if black people, right, like so if black people tend to be more overweight or affected by diabetes, heart disease, that means that their health is already no, I'm, I'm not referring to diabetes, I'm, I'm not, referring to COVID. Listen, I'm, to COVID, I'm not talking diabetes. about I'm talking about having compromised health in its entirety. What, whatever shape, form, or fashion, whether it's diabetes, you're not genetically, well, you're not genetically whatever, predisposed. Me, you're not genetically predisposed to listen, diabetes. Listen, that's not. I'm not. That's not, not genetically what I'm, that's, that, Listen, that's fine. Ooh, that's not on, what I'm on, suggesting. On, you, you did. You're, you're suggested, getting caught up in semantics. My larger point remains the same. You suggested. I don't want. I don't want to get caught up. I don't want to get caught up on it. You suggested. You suggested that you black don't, people can I finish have my thought? a propensity to be more overweight. No, that that's not what I'm case. suggesting at all. That's not and what I'm suggesting what at all. I, I've been, no, that's not what I'm saying. I've been pretty explicit in what it is that I'm saying. I'm not suggesting that they're predisposed to anything. I'm saying that you're saying that black people are leading in these categories, right? And heart disease, uh, not, whatever, okay. being overweight. That's not what, what I said at all. That, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry? Well, that's all I said. You, 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 you you're, you're, you're putting your you're, you're that's, that, that, that's fine. I don't no, no, I don't no, even no, want to no, get no, caught no, up in no, semantics. No, 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 no. No, that's because my said. larger my larger that's point remains the same. Can I finish my thought, please? No, no, because you're, sure. you're, you're being disruptive. You're being disruptive. That's all I said. I, I'm going back to Revelation six and eight in regards to a race of people that have, that have in, stop, stop, stop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut off. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not trying to. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to. Um, um, uh, make this a, a racial thing. What I'm saying is, Revelation six and eight is referring to a race of people 
who have you who have weaponized these things, these animals, or scientifically to affect a certain people or a targeted people in cool. this land. You're, you're countering a point, point that I'm not making though. I'm not done. Per, stop being niggerish. But I wasn't done either though. I'm not, stop being niggerish. I'm, 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 I'm gonna mute you. Stop. I'm referring to Haiti, the president being killed, um, who, who rejected it, and many other African leaders were being told that their lands, which were not um, um, vulnerable to this vi- to this virus, this bullshit virus, um, they were rejecting these vaccines, which are bullshit, again, that are doing more damage than good. Even European countries are suing these companies, Big Pharma, for a vaccine that's doing more damage than good. That's my point. I'm not sure how we, how we went off the rails regarding this vaccine thing. My point is that this Bible, the Bible is referring to a race of people or this pale horse that brings hell and corruption wherever he goes to contaminate or destroy people that are targeted. I'm not sure where I went off but I know for a fact that even the race itself that are responsible for spreading this virus are, are opposed to the vaccination itself. I'm not talking about just um, um, black folks, but even uh, even a European race, Sweden, um, Spain, they're trying to contest the virus. The, 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 the vaccines that are allegedly to help cure it are doing more damage than good. The Bible is substantiating the fact that these that 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 this this nation of people I'm referring to are in fact responsible for all the evil and lies and destruction and murder of races, whether it be black or any other race outside of that race. Or the damaging of the earth. Or there be um, give me um real quick. Um, All right. Can I can I can I can I rebut? Uh, and I, like I understand what your larger point is, but ingrained in, ingrained in that fabric, ingrained in that fabric is dangerous. Okay. I, 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 no, 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 no. You're very scared. It's okay. You're scared. No, don't, okay. don't, don't, don't put that on me. We can, we can have a, we can have a whole conversation. It frightens you for black folks to speak against the powers that be. Okay, that's fine. I, 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 listen, people, people like it's grossly insensitive. People are dying. People, people have lost. I'm sure. I don't care about insensitivity. I don't care. I don't care. I'm sure there are people who lost family members. I don't care about insensitivity. I don't care about that. Give me Jeremiah real quick, fifty one twenty five. I don't care about that. I don't care about insensitivity. I care about Bible. That's what's called biblical school. I don't care about insensitivity. That's we disseminate weak niggas. I don't care about that stuff. Jeremiah, fifty one twenty five, real quick. Jeremiah. Let me know when. I, let me know when. No, 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 you can't. That's when it comes okay. to black folks. The main, the main leaders are comedians, clowns, rappers, effeminate rappers that wear dresses and actors because black folks applicable. are afraid and scared to speak up. I know you're afraid. It's okay. None of this is applicable. Like you, you, you just you, you, you making you, you arguing straw man. You arguing points that I'm not making. Like I'm, like I'm giving you shit that's empirically so. Anecdotal. You give me. Go ahead, E. High under the bed. Just high under the bed. I know Pennywise the clown might scare you. We got please Jeremiah 125. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 25. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out my arm, my hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. See, the problem is that our people have, have, have convinced themselves that America is going to last forever. See, I don't give a shit about America. I know a lot of you black folks on here who are afraid of the white man, and you know he's watching. Shh, be quiet. He's watching. I don't give a shit. So what I'm making it clear is that according to the Bible, America is that destroying mountain. America destroys people, whether it be black, any nation of people who are not who are inferior politically, financially, philosophically, politically, he'll destroy. Primarily the main target of that people he destroys is the children of Israel, who are the African diaspora, who are found in Haiti, South Africa, North Africa, 
all throughout the Americas, Negroes are found. And, 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 our, and the target audience is that people. And so my point is that America, the so-called white man, biblically, is that race that John Revelator spoke of. John the Revelator spoke of as Babylon the Great. And he is that destroying mountain that destroys the earth, the water, the sea, the land, people, water, the earth, everything. He poisons the water with lead, the sky with atmospheric damage, philosophically, religiously, scientifically. He is the, he is the destroyer of people, regardless of race, creed, regardless regardless. So black people who come on this this platform tend to come on here and push this bullshit of being insensitive. I don't give a shit about your your about you being scared and effeminate and bitch made. I am not that man. Biblically speaking, he is that man. He is that race. Period. Undeniably, irrefutably. He is that destroying mountain. And according to prophecy, America the nation that rules all nations and that runs shit, he is that burnt mountain prophesied biblically as Babylon the Great, the land of confusion, the land that tells you that there is gender fluidity, that there is same-sex bathrooms, that a man can feel like you be a woman, woman can feel you could be a man. That is America. That is Edom, the so-called European man and his bitch. I'm going to tell you straight up. And this woman, too. They are, the, they are the progenitors. They are the founders of confusion. And I am not afraid to speak on that. You men who are on here that are afraid to say that shit, stay in the fucking audience. Stay in the box. Don't come on here talking nonsense. I, this America is predestined I completely for nuclear agree. destruction, period. No, stop talking. America is found on that. America is predestined for nuclear Destruction. That's what it is. That's what it is. So, give me a relation also, a piece of that. I'm sorry, I didn't cut you off. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That perk cut me, pissed me off. Give me, go to um, relation as well about destroying mountains as well. Destroying all the earth. I'm sorry, I didn't cut you off. Hey, not, not you. Not, not, you. Uh, not you. I'm sorry. Not you. Hey, hey, E. Yeah. To back you up real quick, didn't uh, Oppenheimer say now? I am become death. Oh, death. yes, yes. William Oppenheimer said, world. Project, Behold, I am become death, destroyer of worlds. When he, when he made, when he, he was helpful in the instrumental um, 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 the weapon uh, of nuclear fission, nuclear science, him and Einstein, William Oppenheimer, the Manhattan Project, nuclear weapons were the instrumental weapon in, in helping solidify the Bible. In the weapon that can, in, in the weapon that can, that can validate the prophecies that Habakkuk, Isaiah, and Daniel, and Malachi, and many others can substantiate a world, a, a time in which the world will burn in vehement fire and nuclear heat. And Zechariah as well, destruction. Read that, please. Yes, sir. Revelation. Chapter 11, verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, the reason and the time of the about, dead. The reason why the nations are angry is because our people, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and the African diaspora will eventually arise and come to the realization that we are the chosen people of God. Our people are found all over the world, Vietnam, Philippines, Hawaii, America, Africa. Russia, Germany. Our people are found all over the world. We are scattered. We are the diaspora that the Bible predestinates to be scattered all over the world. Now we're going to eventually come to realization, come to the realization that we are the God's chosen people. And that and once we come to that realization, we will eventually arise as a people, awaken and bring forth the truth, regardless of the opposition. Or you bitch made Negroes or on the audience who are scared to say the shit I'm saying. Biblically, we're gonna wake up and realize that we are the chosen people of God. And we don't give a shit about the fear or the or the antagon antagonizing of the enemy. We're gonna wake up and speak up regarding who we are according to the Bible, 
and speak against the enemies that be, the powers that be, despite any opposition or any consequence. Period. If you're not built for that, stay your black ass in the audience. If you're tan, beige, white, whatever the ass your ass is, stay in the audience and be quiet. In the audience. Read it again, please. Revelation 11, verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, so and the time of the dead. Moses are angry, and thy wrath. The wrath is nuclear war, World War I, World War Three. How do we know? China is against America. China is siding with Taliban. Taliban is in America right now. Um, Russia hates America. China hates America. Korea hates America. And India are the IT techs, specialists that Russia is seeking to gain further nuclear advancements to further them, their cause in destroying America. Amer Russia is 20 years more advanced in America, in nuclear technology. And America is, is old. Um, Biden is the symbolism of America. He is old, feeble, senile, sleep, and stupid, and dumb. And so is his vice president bitch, fake nigga, um, Kamala Harris. Stop being stupid out here. She is too. So all the nations who have nuclear capability, they see the weakness of America, and they don't give a shit. So. You have to sit up around here and try to contest me and argue me all you want. But all the nations who are nuclear capable are seeing the weakness of America and they're going to make her a burnt mountain, a nuclear burnt mountain. Read on. And thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to thy saints. And to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. To destroy them which destroy the earth. When you examine the race of people that, that kill off lands, people, the atmosphere, the water, nations, there's one race that fit the credentials of doing these things. Africans don't destroy land, sea, air, nation to earth. There's one people that are technologically advanced enough to do this. That is the so-called European race. If you deny this, take your coon, evil, simple, slave-mastered mind ass out the fucking platform and go in the audience. Because anyone who's real in this room knows the European man that fits this credential that destroys the, that destroys the earth, people, animals. Animals that go extinct. We know full well black folks to run around, killing off American eagles, killer whales, and etc. We don't do that. We don't, we're afraid of water. We're afraid of animals. We don't do that. We don't create viruses. We don't go to foreign lands and tell lands what to do. Europeans do that. We don't sit there and create technology to make a man a woman, woman a man, black folks, Hispanic folks, Native Americans. We don't do that unless we are educated in the European sciences. We don't do that. So if you are going to sit up here and coon yourself in this room, please just get a, 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 a shot glass and some Clorox. Drink that till you get sleepy. I'm going to tell you straight. I don't, you don't play that here. This is a biblical smoke. If you're going to come in here with the smoke, I'm, I'm going to tell you straight. Just, 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 just stop. You don't got time. If you're afraid, just send the audience. Okay, yeah. So according to the Bible, the pale horse or the rider upon that pale horse is that nation. Give me you, real quick, give me a buck or two real quick. A buck or two. So coincide with that, a buck or two. A buck or two. Book um, of, to go with the, the, the pale horse, don't talk about a book of? Yes, sir. We book of Habakkuk, chapter two and verse Cause I, I, I'm, not, I'm not making this a black and white thing. It's not a black and white thing. I, I, I'm a black man, and I hate white folks. A white man hates black folks. No, no, no. He doesn't, he doesn't attack just black folks. He attacks all nations that he deems inferior. Okay? Watch this. Biblically, watch this. Read that. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Why? But because, the one, because this nation of people, I'm going to tell you straight. 
there's one nation of people, and make it clear that I, I, I'm gonna tell you straight. When it comes, if we if America lasts five years, ten years, it'll be taboo for a heterosexual to exist. Nigga, you you like you you're a female. You like penis. You nigga, you weird. You're a heterosexual. You like vaginas. You're weird. It's gonna it's gonna be taboo for a man to like vagina. It's gonna be taboo for a female to like penis. I'm gonna tell you straight. Because there's one race of people are pushing that. Read on. Confusion. Read on. But the, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea. Also, because he transgressed by wine. Hold on. The, the wine is the doctrine and the lies that he pushes through what? His politics, his philosophies, his media, his radio. Oh, he controls the airwaves. He controls all that. Read on. He is a proud man. He's a what? Neither, he is a proud man. There's no race on earth that will not marry his man or marry his woman. Indian, African, Arab, Negro, all races aspire or feel that they have ascended into excellence or 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 respect unless they have married his woman or his man. We don't. Neither keep it at home. He don't want. He don't stand his own land. There's an American embassy primarily throughout all the world, throughout all the lands. He don't stay at home. We don't. Who enlargeth his desire as death? He enlargeth his desire as death. He spreads his corruption, his politics everywhere. He spreads his viruses everywhere. He spreads his religion everywhere. He spreads his his philosophies everywhere. That's why you see Chinese folks walking around with three-piece suits. You'll see Arab women walking around pushing feminism when they're Muslim with tight-ass pants on with a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a head wrap on. He spreads his confusion all over the world. That's why the Taliban, the Taliban said, listen, man, you fucking, you women, you ain't wearing no pants no more. You can wear a freaking dress. The Taliban told the women, you can wear a dress. The Taliban, China, China, China passed a law Recently saying there's no effeminacy allowed on their media. There's no effeminate men allowed in their media or, or manly women allowed in their media or individualism allowed in their media. Why? Because American democracy has made its way throughout all the world, spreading confusion and these other nations are not having it. And now that, now that Biden, that old, confused, senile white man, Who's worse than Trump and that fake nigga Kamala um, have made their weakness known to all the nations who have nuclear capabilities? These nations are saying, "Listen, you know what? America ain't shit. We're gonna come. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna decide to put our values first. Not America, but our values first. Read on. And it's as death. It is as death. What's the death? Religion, politics." His viruses, his 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 um German title warfare. It started off with their smallpox, their bubonic plague from not washing their ass in Britain, Spain, Portugal. Now they're using animal fetal tissue and human fetal tissue to merge them together to make the Ebola. That's man-made. AIDS, man-made. HIV, man-made. Space travel, man-made. And hurting the atmosphere, man-made. This this one race who was responsible for all the confusion, viruses killing thousands, vaccines behind these viruses killing thousands, who are focused on making blacks or people of color take this bullshit virus vaccines it is one race that's the white man and his own race is saying. I'm the devil. Not only is a white man seeing the devil, but the white man spreading the viruses. They know this. Is there more? You know? And cannot be satisfied. He cannot be satisfied. Why? Because he steals land. He steals people. He spreads viruses. He, he takes over the earth. He colonized the moon. Now he wants freaking Mars. He is not satisfied. He steals people. He kills people. He kills lands. He steals lands. He steals animals. 
He affects space. He affects people. He affects the water. He affects the land. God is a true God of the Bible. The Bible is a true book. We don't. But gathereth, up, but gathereth unto him all nations, and he, he gathereth did. unto him all nations. Y'all call it America. It's called the Great Melting Pot, where he gathers unto himself all nations and indoctrinates all nations with his bullshit, philosophies, politics, religion, science, all the above, media, all the above. Read on. And heapeth unto him all people. All nations. Go ahead. Shall not all these take up a proverb against him? And as a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. Woe unto him that increaseth him, because America is not his. Australia, Europe is not his. Because the original inhabitants of Europe were black people. He stole that. America, he stole that. The land of Israel, God's land, he stole that. Africa, he's divided that and parted among himself. Belgium, France, Britain, Russia, they stole that too. Woe unto him, I mean, destruction and despair unto him that takes that that doesn't belong to him. Read on. How long? And to him that laideth himself with thick clay. The thick clay is the other nations, the melting pot. Read on. Shall not they rise up suddenly and shall bite thee? And awake, that shall vex thee, and now, thou shalt... Those, those of y'all who pay attention to the news, Britain left the European Union. The European Union is 10 other European nations, as well as America, who do not agree with America's policies, philosophies, politics, war tactics. Eventually, according to prophecy, these nations will turn against America and blow her ass up. Britain left already. It's called Brexit. We research it. These nations are starting to see that America ain't shit. China seeing it. America seeing uh, China seeing it. Uh, Taliban seeing it. Russia seeing it. The uh, uh, um, uh, the Arabs are seeing it. So those of y'all who are, have your head in your ass, you're gonna die here in America. America is on borrowed time. We don't. And thou shalt be for booties unto them. You shall be you shall be robbed and enslaved and taken and you shall lose your wealth. Read on. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. You have spoiled, you have robbed the resources of the people, the lands, the 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 the, 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 the courtesy of many nations. China, Iran, Iraq, the Philippines, Vietnam, Africa. The so-called white man has come across these nations and has robbed, extorted, and exploited nations all over the world throughout the freaking world throughout time. Read on. All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. And the nations who have seen this and acknowledged this, who want stupid-ass niggas in the room or in the audience, have acknowledged this and will rob you as you have robbed them. Read on. Because of men's blood. Because and of for men's blood being nations. Nations blood, read on. And for the violence of the land. And for the violence and, of your land, read on. And for the city, and for all that dwell therein. Woe to him that coveted an evil covetousness an to his evil, house. On, an evil covetousness means an evil desire to stealing things that do not belong to you. Like a race, like a culture, like being a Jew. Stealing a nationality, being a Native American. Oh, I'm Native American when you're freaking white. Being a Jew when you're white. When the original Native Americans were Israelites, the original Christians were Negro Israelites, the original Native Americans were Israelites, you steal their identity. You rob and you lie, you steal, and you push it and you and you and you and you exploit and extort the religion. Read on. That he may set his nest on high. How let's on high going to what? The technology, their science, their moon, their satellites, their space force. They set the nest on high because um men like John Bezos, um men like the Virgin Records owner, men like um um what's his name? Uh what's his name? That's freaking uh what's his name? That what's his name? Huh? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Who? 
Elon Musk. Elon, thank you. Elon Musk, Bezos, the bridge of Vegas owner, these guys are trying to escape the inevitable. They know, unlike you simple coons on it, on it, know that America is on borrowed time. They be going to Mars. They're trying to go to Jupiter. They colonize the moon. The moon don't belong to them. They colonize Mars. Mars don't belong to them. They colonize Africa. Africa don't belong to them. They colonize Australia. Australia don't belong to them. Hawaii don't belong to them. Israel, Africa don't belong to them. Read on. That he may be delivered from the power of evil. The power of evil is the Lord's return. The black Messiah who the white man with, with the help of dumb, weak-ass, scared niggas that were online who helped lynch him on a cross. That same black Messiah who was lynched thousands of years ago, like his, four, like, like his children, who were lynched all throughout the Americas, throughout the uh, throughout North, South of America, who were lynched and hung. That same black Messiah will return and bring forth vengeance and death and judgment to the same wicked niggas and heathen who are responsible for his death. He will bring forth destruction to them wherever they're at. The moon, Saturn, Mars, wherever the hell they're at. He's going to judge them. So those of you who are afraid to speak up as men on this platform, stay your weak, black, tan, beige asses in the audience and let real men speak up according to the Bible. We are in biblical smoke. In my mind. Bring it out, sir. Well, dude, uh, there you have it. Uh, we appreciate everybody for the night. Uh, we want to thank everybody for their participation. E has brought the five. Uh, you can email us at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com if any of y'all have any questions or concerns. Uh, let the stage die down from the fire and flames real quick. Does anybody have any last words before we get that Thanos snap out of here? I just wanted to say um, the school system, too. You know what I mean? They got rich off the school system. Yep. All right. That being said, we appreciate everybody. See you, Lord's will, tomorrow. Then we'll snap. Go.